There All right, go. Natalie, it's do like another. a sad clap. <laughs> Just outdo that. Uh, now you got to clap harder better. than I clap. Outclap me. Did, are we making this a competition? We're making this a yeah. competition. <laughs> and you lost. Oh, that was pretty good. Uh, no, that time. No, I'm going to do it. Oh. Ready? Ow. Yeah, my hands are kind of stinging. <laughs> All right, what do we have today? Can I look at the tag? Ooh, bismuth. Bismuth is a little bit different than anything we've talked about in the past as it is an element. So it is pure. There's no other compounds that we're going to see today. It's not like a gemstone that you have a lot of different elements coming together. So we get this perfect recipe for a beautiful gem. Oh, wow. I told you. This is so cool. What's that Halloween movie? The Night Before... The Nightmare Before Christmas. The Nightmare Before Christmas. This looks like something that would come out of The Nightmare Before Christmas, doesn't it? It just looks spooky and Halloweeny, and Steven is that that's Steven Spielberg, isn't it? Who is that? Tim Burton. This looks very Tim Burton esque. First of all, what I noticed is like is the coloring, how sharp some of these points are. A little bit heavier than I was expecting. It was lab grown, but not man made, which I think is really neat. It's a little bit too brittle to make jewelry, although it has been done. We're actually gonna bring in Elizabeth, who's a geologist, to tell us all about bismuth, where it's found. My question for her is how exactly can we grow it like this? Cause this is pretty darn cool. I'm gonna call up Elizabeth so we can get down to bismuth. So I'm probably not gonna find this out in the wild. I don't know why I keep saying out in the wild. So these guys actually have, as far as metal goes, a pretty low melting point. They melt at about it's in the mid 500 and something degrees Fahrenheit, so you can't actually melt these on a stove. How often do people find this? So typically what they do is they actually melt down other materials that contain the bismuth. It's hard to find as like a pure elemental substance. I haven't seen it in jewelry. Have you ever seen it? I don't think I've ever, maybe a couple I haven't couple seen pieces. it in jewelry, and I could see people actually taking pieces of this if this was like removed from the main mass and, and be, wearing it. Yeah, that'd be Cause cool. it'd be pretty, it'd be really artistic and different. I've heard um, rumors that bismuth is weakly radioactive. It is radioactive. But it is so weakly radioactive that its half-life is estimated to be more than a billion times the age of the solar system. So we're good. We're good. Never mind. The way the crystals are grown is actually termed a hopper crystal, which mm -hmm. basically means it's like a funnel. And so they are actually growing faster on the outside than they are on the inside. That's pretty cool. So that's kind of why we see that step pattern, yeah? Right. All right, you we got, got another me? another present. You want to unbox it or do you want me to unbox it? I got this. You got it? Remember, no shaking the boxes. Oh, there we go. That's cool. I still see that same like step pattern, which is really neat. Was it grown in a bowl or something? Yeah, so it's probably grown in a crucible. A crucible is small or big bowl, whatever but it's made out of a material that has an extremely high melting point and it's mm -hmm. not gonna crack. And so you're able to actually put, you know, pretty volatile elements in it. Um, if they start to say catch on fire or something, you'll be okay. okay. Is it pretty easy to grow this? It's pretty easy. So basically you get your raw bismuth, put it into a potter pan that you do not care about anymore. Okay and you heat it up and you cook it on the stove and then you let it cool down over time. As it starts to cool, the bismuth will actually start to crystallize. Is this something I can do over the weekend or is it gonna take oh, a couple yeah. months? You can do it in a day. These look extremely different. This one probably grew top down. Yes. And this one probably grew from the, from the bottom up. It was connected up here so the crystals were growing down. Growing down, and then what about that one? So this guy was basically just the bottom of the bowl. He was able to detach it and then polish the back of it. You can see where he actually had to cut it mm -hmm. away. And depending on how pure it is, you'll actually get prettier colors. This is a really good one, but I have seen some that are like lab grown that are like crazy rainbows. So this is what bismuth would look like. That's the the color. Coloring. Kind of brassy. So kind of out in the wild. Why do I keep saying in the wild? Welcome to the jungle. Welcome to the, the gemstone jungle. Compared to other heavy metals, it is pretty much non-toxic. They use it industrially, and then they also use it for different like packaging, sometimes even in stuff that used to have lead, like paints and oh, things like cool. that. They started to use it because it's not toxic to people in the same way that other arsenic, lead, and all those other ones are. It is very useful to people, mm -hmm. but it's something that you don't really think about. So it's, it's included in products, but in minute amounts. Poor guy, he's all forgotten. Unless Not you're on really. a YouTube show. Not really if you've ever chugged some Pepto-Bismol. <laughs> Pepto-Bismol, gross. It works. I know, but it makes me nauseous thinking about it. It's not Millennium Pink, Millennial Pink. 
You know what I'm talking about, don't you? I have no idea what that is. It's just like a thing. Okay. It's like a thing. I don't even know how to describe it. It's just like a thing in pop culture. Thanks to Bismuths for keeping America's tummies nice tummies and nice calm and down. Cool. <laughs> this isn't a byproduct. This is on purpose. But I've always kind of wanted to see what somebody could do with a, you know, man-made materials that might be beautiful crystals, but they're byproducts or they're, you know, something that we make rather than the earth. Like we would this. probably have a whole case that could be, you know, man-made materials. Actually, that would be really cool. We could display Pepto-Bismol, too. Do a whole bismuth case. Elizabeth, I know how much you love bismuth, so why don't you uh, just take one of these, your favorite, and hold it up to the, the lens right there and tell people something cool that you like about it. Well, of course, I love the beautiful, shiny surface of the bismuth, and then I love their crystal shapes because you just really don't see a whole lot of that in nature. Elizabeth, thanks for coming on today. It's been a pleasure doing bismuth with you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> is half the joy of her doing puns is watching my face? Now that Elizabeth is gone, it's time to get back to bismuth as usual. My favorite thing that I saw today was the, the cool coloring and how unique um, each of these are. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Why don't you leave me uh, in the comments your, your favorite bismuth crystal that you have, your favorite bismuth pun. Leave it for Elizabeth and I and we will check it out in the future. Thanks for watching.